Thanks for clicking on to the 73rd edition of Vogan's Global Weather and Climate Report. Hope everybody is safe and well. It is Christmas Eve and it's all eyes on the potential for snow during the big day coming up tomorrow. We'll look at that in just a second. We'll also look at the year temperatures globally and how they continue to run that warm theme both in the oceans, the land masses, and the atmosphere overall. But as you can see here, this is uh, the UKV model for 850 temperatures above the UK and Ireland, and it's all about the seesaw continuation of ups and downs in terms of the air masses here. So as we progress through the course of today, you can see here that we've got the, the mild conditions to start with. Uh, it would help if I can get to today as opposed to yesterday, but you can see the mild theme moving in during the course of the second half of yesterday into the early portions of today. Then we're going to start to see a drop off once again as a new area of low pressure moves in off the Atlantic and it's that swathe between Perth and Inverness where we could see some heavy precipitation falling in the form of snow for some areas here even down to relatively low levels but you can see during the course of today we've got that divide between plus four and five across the south coast of the uh, of the uk here so uh, anywhere from devon all the way across to kent we've got a bit of a contrast in fact we've got plus seven in the southwest corner of england as you can see here versus plus two to plus four uh, around the Margate area down towards say uh, Folkestone here in the southeast corner but then once you get the uh, up towards the uh, south midlands northwards the air temperature is around the zero mark at 5,000 feet above our heads and then as we progress into Scotland you can see here temperatures down as low as minus five minus six at 850 so this is the latter half of today and into Christmas day itself and then as we play it through, you can see here that the mild conditions can prevail across the far south, up across the north, minus 6 to minus 8 Celsius at 850 here. So you can see the overall idea. Then that warmer air moving back northwards again, ahead of the next system moving in off the Atlantic. And then with cold air coming in on the back side of each low. So it's the ups and down nature. The roller coaster in terms of temperature profile continues for the uk and ireland here so the met office's greatest chance of seeing snowfall across the uk is like i said anywhere from about what you could draw a line from crane Larrack across to perth then northwards just to the south of inverness that is where we have the greatest chance of seeing 10 centimeters at high elevations two or three centimeters down at low levels or relatively low levels looks as if abbey moore is going to see a white Christmas and adjacent areas, Carbridge to the north, uh, Dal, uh, Dalwini, uh, Port, uh, um, Blair Athol down further south, even down towards Pitlock Room, I might see uh, snow falling on Christmas Day itself. So we are rapidly approaching the end of 2023. This is the global temperature anomalies uh, to date. And you can see here that we've got a world of warmth with the just pockets of below average temperatures here. Uh, whatever side of the fence you sit on, whatever reasoning behind the warming, there's no denying the warming itself. And I want to emphasize that point that the it has been an exceptionally warm year, whether that's to do with the development of the El Nino. There's no question that the ocean temperatures around the world are far warmer than they have been in the last 20, 30 years. The question is, are we about to see any sort of a turnaround? The Tonga Hunga volcanic eruption back at the early portions of last year, uh, releasing you know billions of tons or millions of tons of uh, water vapor into the atmosphere. Uh, we've also seen record breaking amounts of water vapor within the atmosphere as well. Definitely think the second half of this year, the onset of the El Nino, the warm Atlantic, has contributed to a very, very wet second half to 2023 for the UK and Ireland overall. But there's so many complicating factors that can be thrown in there. Uh, uh, let me know in the comments section below what you think. Is it carbon dioxide? Is it uh, natural cycles? Uh, you know, I would be curious to know 
what your thoughts are without opening up a complete can of worms here. Year to date temperatures for Europe, you can see here that it is has been a warm 2023. Interesting how we're uh, around average for most of Scotland. As you can see, Central Belt uh, southwards has been warmer than average here. Parts of the Midlands eastwards, average conditions colder than average across Norway here. Even pockets of uh, Sweden has been below average. Average conditions across Finland, and uh, it has been a very cold October, November, and to date anyway, very cold December, also here. So let's have a look and see what the the month to date temperatures are looking here as we approach the final week or so of two thousand and twenty three, and the opening month of meteorological winter. So you can see here the cold theme continues across Scandinavia, Finland, in the western Russia. If we skip back through the last couple of months, this was November, this was uh, October, and you have to go back to September, the last time it was colder, or warmer, should I say, than average across Scandinavia in particular. So even Scotland during November, colder than average. So far in December, you can see the turnaround take place, all part of the forecast. And it's a far cry to um, the, the January of 1979. This was 1979, incidentally. Uh, global sea surface temperatures look like this here. So the El Nino very much at play, but it looks as if the atmosphere is showing more of a Madoki style El Nino, enhanced convection towards the date line. That then, in turn, while we've got a very strong jet stream, both Pacific and Atlantic at the moment, we are expecting with the MJO. And also things that are going on within the polar stratosphere also. We expect the jet stream to weaken the IOD, Indian Ocean Dipole, very, very rapidly declining here. You can see that we've now turned the ocean profile around off Sumatra, Western Indonesia. Instead of having those deep blue colours and the warmth of the West, we're now replacing it with warmer than average conditions. So we've got more or less neutral conditions now in the Indian Ocean um, so El Nino, Indian Ocean Dipole, possibly playing a bit of a role during the month of December in terms of the pattern, firing up the jet stream, both Pacific. We've had very, very warm conditions over North America, also across the west of Europe. And you can see the warm waters extending from the tropics all the way up towards the southern portions of Ireland and the UK. A bit of a, a North Atlantic tripole, warm, cold, warm. So that'll be interesting to see what happens as we move forward here, we're starting to see a, a significant drop off in temperatures in the Nino region 1.2. You can see here, Nino region 3.4 has been pretty much a level uh, at around 1.5 above average here. But if we look at Nino region 1.2, you can see the big decline in the temperature here. Quite a sharp contrast, actually. It's only a half a degree above average where it was well over two celsius above average back during the early portions of september which is quite interesting to see even with the the atlantic here we've seen quite a drop off in the temperature also so if we look at the atlantic real quick here uh, you can see that the the decline in the temperature was dropped off from about one celsius above to uh, less than a half a degree actually above average it's kind of waxed and waned slightly but it's been on that kind of level playing field anywhere from about the what the middle portion of November. We've seen that sharp drop off. And I think that's to do with the increase in storminess over the North Atlantic, stirring up cold waters from deep below up towards the surface. So we've seen that drop from about plus one to less than a half a degree. So we've dropped nearly three quarters of a degree off uh, what we were, which is very interesting to see. So, yeah interesting times to come as we move into the new year period the stratosphere playing a significant uh, role here's the latest run of the the gfs for 10 hpa temperatures so all these sightings of nacreous clouds or polar stratospheric clouds the form within an environment of around minus 85 celsius it's normally within the core of the, the polar vortex itself the reason why we're seeing that ireland uk near continent northern europe is the fact that the warming taking place over the other side of the pole on the Asian side has been forcing the displacement of the PV over towards Northern Europe, hence why we've seen these clouds. Nothing exceptionally unusual. I've seen a lot of make, like mentions of the fact that it's very, very rare sightings. In fact, we have seen this quite often. In fact, we've seen nacreous clouds 
uh, at the end of January earlier this year. And the question is, is these sightings of these clouds in our part of the world a harbinger of a major SSW that takes place a couple of weeks later? We've seen it in January. We've seen the major sudden stratospheric warming take place that delivered a very cold portion of March. And is the big question is, and we have seen it several times over in years gone by, these nacreous clouds showing up over our heads before a major SSW take, takes place. Now, this is the latest run of the GFS and so on. You can see the very strong warming taking place over Asia and then the warming bends towards the pole. The question is, can we see the reversal in the mean zone of winds of 10 HPA? That would actually constitute a true definition of a, a sudden stratospheric warming. Do we see a split? Do we see a displacement, a, a complete collapse, or a split of the polar vortex? That was going to be uh, the question as we go into the new year period here. But this is a major significant warming taking place within the upper levels of the stratosphere. More on that in next week's video. And as we go through the course of the upcoming week, We'll look at the stratosphere in more detail and what is happening up here. If it happens, that is a big question still because there's no guarantee that it's going to happen. But what does it mean if we do get that reversal in the zonal winds and the transfer of energy from stratosphere into the troposphere? We'll look at that in more detail in the upcoming week ahead. So stay tuned for that. Be sure to like, let myself and YouTube know that you're enjoying the content here on the channel and also subscribe for uh, future weather updates. So what's going on around the world in the last uh, week or so here? Let's have a look and see. Well, first of all, North America is seeing very, very warm conditions, possibly what, some of the warmest weather on record for this time of the year. We're also seeing some very mild conditions over western portions of Europe. And the core of the cold within the, the middle latitudes of the, the Northern Hemisphere at the moment is over eastern portions of Asia, where we've seen record snow and record cold. We'll look at that in a second. But this was uh, seen today, strong winds, down sloping southern portions of uh, Switzerland. We've seen remarkable warmth. Temperatures as high as 22.3 Celsius, only 1.3 off the December record for Sw uh, Switzerland. So remarkable warmth over central portions of, of Europe here at the moment. This is the scene in parts of uh, Western Canada, heavy snowfall in British Columbia, as seen here by our friend Thierry Goose, some very significant amounts of snow, by the way. That is a uh, very impressive uh, snow scenes indeed. Let's continue to skip through. We've got these big contrast temperatures as high as 47.6 in parts of Australia. Of course, we've seen record breaking rainfall in parts of Queensland. Severe flooding has been the case. We've also seen exceptional cold in uh, the Koreas after record warmth. Eastern China, the Koreas, Japan, uh, you know, all time December records fallen in many areas. We've seen a massive cold sw uh, spell sweeping out of Siberia through Mongolia, northeastern China, through the Koreas. Temperatures almost nine, minus 39 Celsius, by the way, at the 1,300 meters above sea level over North Korea. And that is pretty exceptional stuff. Uh, December record cold in several spots across northeastern China. It's been 50 years the last time temperatures reached minus 15 or lower in the capital, Beijing. And uh, pretty impressive stuff here. Record warm temperatures. This is the weird and wacky world that we're living in at the moment here. Record breaking warmth in the Canadian Maritimes. Uh, we're seeing record cold conditions in Guatemala, the lowest December temperature in over 30 years, uh, with minus 5.6 Celsius recorded um, at the 2,400 metres above sea level. Now, bear in mind, Guatemala is a tropical nation, uh, of course. 17.4 parts of Quebec, remarkable for the month of December here. And then we continue to skip through uh, record warm conditions in the uh, in parts of central Canada, and this here uh, in twenty four hours eight hundred and seventy millimeters of rainfall in in parts of Queensland here some of the highest daily rainfall uh, temp uh, rainfall amounts within a twenty four hour period anywhere in Australia, which is quite interesting to see. So ran out of time unfortunately. Record cold conditions in like I say as as far east as. Japan, but I've run out of time. 
more in the coming days. Ha happy Christmas to everybody, and I'll see you again on Boxing Day with.